Patrick, you played three championship rounds on this golf course in 2010 and here, and you shot three rounds in the 60s. Why so comfortable? Why so good on this on this particular course? You know, I mean, I think what it is this week is I'm hitting my tee shots pretty solid, and uh, you know, I, I feel very confident with the driver. I feel like I, you know, I can set up, swing almost as hard as I want to, and it's going to be in the fairway. And when you can play out of the fairway from here, you have chances. And you know, this afternoon, it got really firm and really fast. So if you if you didn't hit the fairways, you were going to struggle to hold in greens and. And I was able to keep my ball in the fairway. Where, did you swing it as hard, and were you feeling that comfortable five years ago when you were here as an amateur? Well, five years ago, I swung as hard as I possibly could, probably, <laughs> knowing me. Um, that's something that I've kind of tried to gear back on is more on getting the ball in play. And, uh, you know, with this driver that I have, I, I have a lot of confidence in it. So I feel like I can just keep swinging harder and harder, and uh, I know where it's going to go. Were you pleased with the round, even though both beyond 18? No, not at all. Uh, you know, I actually thought it was a pretty disappointing round. Um, to have six bogeys, I think it was six, five or six bogeys, didn't get up and down once. I was zero percent on up and downs today, and uh, you know to hit the ball in the middle of the green on 18 and have no chance to put a normal putt and stop it near the hole and have to play kind of Mickey Mouse golf to try to make try to make par. Uh, you know, unfortunately, is a bad way to end the, end the day. But uh, you know, we're in a good position. Hopefully, we can have a good weekend and have a chance to win. A dozen players within three shots. How, how uh, is it shaping up to be a horse race, do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely going to be a tournament that anyone has a chance to win. If a guy goes out and shoots, you know, gets really hot and goes shoots seven, eight under par, I mean, who knows what he's going to do with the uh, with the scoreboard. So, you know, that, that's how it is at every U.S. Open. It seems like, uh, you know, until the 72nd hole's done, it's anybody's game. And, uh, you know, I just have to go in and take it hole by hole and shot by shot and hopefully at the end have a chance. Patrick, your thoughts on playing the third round of the U.S. Open with Jordan Spieth, your Ryder Cup partner? It's going to be fun. Uh, anytime I get to play with Jordan, I enjoy it. So, you know, the main thing for me is just stay focused and uh, focus on what I need to do to play some good golf and, you know, hopefully uh, plot my way around this golf course, especially if it gets firmer and faster and knowing where to leave the golf ball. What did you learn about Jordan during the Ryder Cup week that you hadn't known about him before? Nothing. I, I knew he was a great player before, so uh, you know it, it didn't surprise me that he went over and played really well over there with me. So you know, I didn't really learn anything different from him. You seem thoroughly disappointed in the round as he just described, and yet you're a, you're a, you know going out on a Saturday in the lead. Is it, is there some consolation in the fact that you cannot play your best golf and still be in this position? Yeah, you know, I mean, if you're if you were to tell me last week, uh, I'll give you a share of the lead, and uh, we can start Saturday today. I would have taken it. For sure, um, but I feel like I hit the ball a lot better than I did today, and uh, you know there's just some loose golf shots in there, making bogey with a wedge in my hand, three putting the last with. Uh, you know, I feel like I hit a really good iron shot, and you know, there's just too many bogeys, and I need to clean that up. And you know I felt like I would go make a birdie, then I'd, I'd give it right away, and uh, you know you can't do that here. And you know if I didn't do that, I'd, I'd have like a four or five shot lead. But uh, you know we're in good position. Did you feel you had an advantage this week? Having played here before in the, in the 2010 amateur, doing so well. Well, five years ago, I probably was only hitting the ball out of my shadow. So, uh, you know, I, I I honestly didn't think I had any kind of advantage or really anything from playing it five years ago. The only thing I knew is a uh, kind of what what to expect on the firmness, the fast uh, the fast pace of the golf course. That's about it. Um, you know, when I got back out here, I kind of remembered some of the lines and all that, but. You know, they can move tee boxes around so much and you know they can firm this place up a ton they can soften up I and mean, they can do so many different things that you, you, they're always going to keep you guessing and uh, the main thing is you have to be able to know where you want to land each shot and i feel like we're doing that pretty well i just need to execute a little better were the bogeys because you were attacking and made a few mistakes or were they the conditions um <laughs> one of them was bad tee shot on seven I mean, you can't hit it in the rough there because the green's so firm and so elevated. And I hit it in the rough and, did, I mean, hit, hit it over the green, made bogey. And nine was a poor iron shot short of the green, made bogey. Ten was a, I thought was a really good iron shot. And it landed right in the lip of the bunker, made bogey. And then 14 was a uh, another solid iron shot that ended up going just over the green. Didn't get up and down. And 15 was a bad swing with a 51 degree. I mean, you, you can hit it. 30 feet left and be fine and I you know I flailed it a little right and fed down the slope into the bunker and 
when you short sell yourself and the greens are this firm, there's no no chance of stopping it. So, uh, and in the last hole, I felt like I had two two quality golf shots and uh, had to play Mickey Mouse on the green because the pin was ridiculous. How would you feel about a par four 18 on the final round? I mean, it, it doesn't matter to me if it's a par four or par five, but just put a, put a halfway decent pin for a par four. Henrik Stenson is very upset with the way that the course is playing, especially as the time went on. He's sort of like putting on rock, particularly the greens. Would you kind of agree with that assessment? You know, they were really firm. They started to get really firm this afternoon, which, you know, they would have gotten really firm yesterday afternoon if the sun came out. Uh, you know, that's one thing I remember during, throughout the couple of practice rounds we played. During the afternoon, it got really, really firm. And uh, today, with the sun coming out, the wind blowing a little bit, they got really hard, which, I mean, it, it's what you expect. But, uh, you know, they're, they're a little bumpy today, but I felt like if you hit, if you hit some solid putts, you, know, you had to, I mean, I would say probably 90 95% chance going in. You know, maybe 10 or 5 percent of them might have hopped and maybe catch a lip and lip out you know it, it just it just all depended on each hole and each shot and you know if, if you had to putt defensive because you're putting downhill the whole time i mean you just never know so uh you know, it's definitely a challenge and hopefully uh hopefully they smooth out a little bit for more all right thank you guys thank you